Hello, I'm Robin Young with Compass and I have a, some really important information to share with you that is going to outline where the real estate market is going to be going for the rest of the year. There are four things that I wanted to go over with you. One is buyer fatigue, two is forbearance, three is interest rates, and four is appreciation going forward. So number one with buyer fatigue. It's real. I get it. What buyers went through in Q1 and Q2 of this year, I've never seen in the 28 years of selling real estate here in the San Francisco East Bay area. And I can understand why you would want to step away and take a break. It was the toughest marathon I think any of us, realtors included, have ever done. Ladies and gentlemen, because so many buyers have stepped away from the market, you have less competition, okay? I Case in point, I was able to get a buyer into escrow. Actually, it's happened twice this week, um, where I've been able to get buyers into escrow with an accepted purchase price below list. Doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. And one of those buyers, it was a multiple offer scenario, and we still won. And we had an investigation contingency. How often does that happen in today's market? Not often. So it does happen. You just have to be diligent. Now let's talk about forbearance. Forbearance. So these are homeowners who are behind on their mortgage payment. And through COVID, they chose, you know, the forbearance protection. And now they're coming out of that. And there's a lot of chatter out there that these properties are gonna go into foreclosure. So let me give you some data. Last year this time, the percentage of homeowners that were in forbearance in the United States was 8%. Currently in the United States, the percentage of homeowners who were in forbearance is 3.9%. Huge drop. Here's another tidbit. 96% of the homeowners who are in forbearance have a minimum 10% equity in their home, which means they have money and equity to still be able to sell that property, list it with a realtor, get it sold, and put money in their pocket to help them get reestablished into the next property and save their credit without having a foreclosure on it. So with that, do you think a homeowner is going to allow a bank to foreclose on their property and give all of that equity to the bank? I doubt it. Very few would do that. There would be other circumstances of why they would do that. So what could we see if these homeowners aren't able to come up with an agreement with the lender, do like a loan mod to make up the payments later on? And said, so, yeah, we are going to see more inventory come to market, but it's not going to be the wave of foreclosures that a lot of uh, forecasters are predicting out there. Okay, so there's that. Third, interest rates. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the most expensive cost that you have in purchasing a property is the interest that you're paying on the money you're borrowing. Case in point, if you take a property, you purchase it today, for $850,000 and you have an interest rate at 3% or below, there's your payment. Let's say you, you're you like, you know what, I'm going to wait. Okay, we wait a year. Now that property, you can purchase it for $800,000, but the interest rate is now at 3.75 to 4%. Guess what? Your mortgage payment's higher, even at the lower purchase price because the interest rate has gone up. How does that make sense for you? Just something to think about, okay? Fourth, appreciation. If you purchase a home today and you take the conservative appreciation that's being forecasted out for the next five years, you will add $100,000 to the appreciation of your property. Not bad. So, unless, of course, you can save $20,000 a year and keep on renting, then by all means, go for it. If you have any questions about any of this information that I'm sharing with you, do reach out to me if you're 
considering and making a move in real estate, reach out to me. Let's have the conversation. And as always, make it a powerful day. Take care.